These are all of the leaks I could find about episode 2 of the Amazing Digital Circus, starting with the Candy Canyon Kingdom, an area that reminds me of the candy cart game from Wreck-It Ralph. We also get to see a fast food location called Spud Seas, and some sort of haunted mansion, and a prototype of some sort of arena that Kane is trying to hide from us. Now, you may be thinking, this seems like a lot of locations for just the second episode, but what if I told you that all of these locations are actually located in the Candy Canyon Kingdom? Let me explain. If we take the plot of the first episode, episode into account, we can assume that the characters of the cast will split up in this episode. Some of them will go to the main Candy Canyon area, some of them will go to the Haunted Mansion, and some of them will go to the fast food location called Spud Seas. But I don't think this would make a lot of sense if Kane split them up into completely different areas. So that's why I think that all of these areas are actually located in the Candy Canyon Kingdom. But let me know in the comments down below if you guys agree. It also seems like all the inhabitants are just made out of candy, like this candy monster who at first I thought was a form of the Gloink Queen, but from a community post from Glitch Productions, it makes me think otherwise. They said, quote unquote, this is the fudge monster and he is made out of fudge. But from the looks of it now, it actually seems like he's a nice dude. We also see the candy princess who bears a striking resemblance to Princess Peach. And we also got eight more characters, which I will touch on later in this video. So as I said, I think that all of these locations are located in the Candy Canyon Kingdom. But what about the secret arena that Kane is hiding from us? This leads us into the next leak we are shown, which is an unrendered scene from the trailer that looks like like some sort of stadium or coliseum? Of course, we only get to see it for a couple seconds before Kane gets subconscious about his unfinished work and covers it up. I personally think that this could be used in a scene where the characters somehow fight one another for a mini game that Kane makes. But here's my theory. If you look at this image right here of the Candy Canyon Kingdom, the first thing you might notice is some sort of castle in the background. Now, at first glance, this actually looks pretty similar to the arena, but I don't think that's the case because if that was so, it would have been revealed what the castle looked like, and he wouldn't have said it was unfinished, because as we can see from the outside of this picture right here, it most definitely is finished, so I think this is something completely different. The next leak, and probably the most well-known leak so far, is the inside of Pomni's bedroom. Pomni's room has been a topic of discussion in the Amazing Digital Circus fandom for quite a while now, due to it being teased multiple times over a span of months. You may remember that the Wacky Watch on Glitch Productions website shows Pomni sleeping in her bed, and since that has been shown, many people, including myself, theorize about what what the inside of Pomni's room could look like, besides the small fraction of what was shown to us. Well, recently, over on Glitch Productions' YouTube channel, they put up a community tab post with a picture of Pomni's door and a challenge saying, get this post to 100,000 likes and they will show what's inside the door. And of course, it goes without saying that everyone absolutely obliterated this goal incredibly quickly. It got the likes in less than six hours. Anyways, Glitch Productions kept their promise to the community and showed this picture of her room. And as suspected, it looked very good, painted in her color scheme and furnished generally looking quite cozy. It's interesting that Glitch showed us this though, especially this early since the episode is set to release in a few months. More on that later. And usually things are shown this far before release are more important details to keep the fans waiting and excited. So it's safe to say that Pomni's room could have quite a big role in the next few episodes, but we will just have to wait and see. But now for what most of you guys have probably been waiting for, we are going to talk about the 8 new characters that we are getting. The first first character we see is an old western style crocodile or alligator, or maybe it's a dinosaur or a lizard? I'm not really sure. Anyways, he appears to be wearing a hat reminiscent of that worn by Indiana Jones. I don't get much of a shoot em up type vibe from him, like say, a cowboy. Obviously this character is from the Candy Canyon Kingdom. I mean, look around, of course it's a desert type area. Anyways, it's all but confirmed that Kane is going to take them on a new mini game outside of the circus. But from what I can tell you, it's not actually inside the circus, so I'm not quite sure how that works in the setting of the show, but perhaps I'll make a theory about that another time. Anyways, my personal theory is that this dinosaur, crocodile, thing will be some sort of tour guide or ally of some sort to help the cast. Gooseworks also seems to really like this character, because shortly after the Wake Up Pomni It's Time to Go on an Adventure video drop, she posted a picture of this character on her Twitter saying quote unquote my boy, which shows that Gooseworks maybe has some sort of attachment to this character. The second character shown is some sort of purple or blue bubble man inside of the same fast food location that we see Jackson, which is called Spud Seas. Unlike our crocodile friend, he seems to be completely unfitting for his location. Maybe 
Candy Spud Seas is located in the Candy Canyon, as well as this Bubble Man is perhaps made out of some sort of hard candy or lollipops or something. What they are doing in the fast food chain and why Jax is working there is currently up for debate. But I'm getting a Troublemaker vibe from this character, so maybe Kane sends all of the Troublemakers to work in this minimum wage job as a punishment, which actually would make a lot of sense, and Kane is actually pretty smart for doing this. The third quote-unquote character shown to us is a reel-to-reel -reel with seemingly no face. If you didn't know, a reel-to-reel -reel is basically an old way of playing videos or movies before digital format files were created, and things like cassettes and vinyls, a more physical way of storing music, were relevant. If you know what a vinyl is, a reel-to-reel -reel is sort of the same but with pictures and video. Anyways, I'm not even entirely sure how this is considered a character, but maybe the two circles are the eyes and the big notch thing is its mouth. This seems to be in a darker light room, maybe the same room where Kinger is attacking something with the butt end of a shotgun, but due to the simple design of the character, I like to think they're in some sort of haunted mansion or something, and maybe the old reel-to-reel -reel will give them an overview of everything they will have to do. And when I think about it, Kinger would bring a shotgun to a haunted mansion, so that's the theory I'm gonna go with here. The fourth character we get to see appears to be one from the Candy Canyon Kingdom, and something about their design seems very familiar to me. The sharp teeth and eyes remind me quite a bit of the Gloink Queen, and I think this character will show up as a gag with the Gloinks again, but this time with a candy spin on it. And this plays into the previous theory I have, where the Candy Canyon Kingdom is another one of Kane's minigames, where he's gonna make the characters of the Amazing Digital Circus do another task to keep them busy. And obviously, if this is some sort of Gloink Queen, they will be evil. But I personally think it'll just be something maybe as a recurring bit in the episode. But you can never be so sure, because the Amazing Digital Circus is full of surprises. The fifth character we've seen is a very cute looking ghost. And if you remember the theory about the Haunted Mansion from earlier in the video, I think that this ghost character will tie into that. I believe that the cast will be exploring through a Haunted Mansion and be looking for something or someone. Maybe since we see Kinger alone with his shotgun, Kinger will somehow get separated from the group, prompting everyone to go search for him. But Kinger is doing absolutely just fine with his trusty shotgun, kicking ass and taking names, which I personally am all here for. But a quick point I wanted to make is that at first, maybe I thought that this Haunted Mansion would be something brand new. The cutesy design given to this ghost rather than a more menacing one makes me think that maybe this will take place in the Candy Kingdom. But I also have trouble figuring out how a Haunted Mansion, a brand new area, and more will fit in less than half an hour. But of course, I'm always ready to be pleasantly surprised. The sixth character we get shown is a Candy Princess, which I would guess is the ruler of this Candy Kingdom. Something important to note is that they are literally Princess Peach. And I mean, their hair is seemingly made out of those disgusting peach candy slices. And their outfit looks incredibly similar to Princess Peach from Mario. If anything, I think at least one joke will be made about this. I can guarantee it. This is also even more likely because the creators of Glitch Productions also run a channel called SMG4, which makes a whole bunch of funny videos using the IP of Mario characters in their own to make funny situations. Anyways, I can guarantee that this queen will welcome the cast with kindness. Of course, though, it's the amazing digital circus, and I think somehow the gang will find a way to be on the queen's bad side. Hell, she might even send an army of candy men after them, but that's just some small speculation, though. The seventh character we are shown is some sort of light blue ghost in front of a brown curtain. They appear to be wearing clothes from the early 1900s, and appear, obviously, to be a ghost, which if you have been paying any attention, this seems to be a recurring theme among these characters. I also noticed that this character seems to have a lot of human attributes to her. My theory is that she was an explorer in this haunted mansion location, and then she got possessed and turned into a ghost. The further in that I go, the more I just start to think that all of these characters aren't from the same episode, just because of purely how many are being shown, and I think this is a crazy amount of locations to have an episode too. So what I think is that there will be one episode about the Candy Canyon Kingdom, and then another about this haunted mansion or whatever it is. Or they're gonna do something like episode one, where the cast is gonna split up, half is gonna go to the Candy Canyon Kingdom, and the other half is going to go to this haunted mansion. And obviously we already know Kinger is gonna go there because he has a shotgun, and I think that Jax will go to the Candy Canyon Kingdom because he seems to be in some sort of like minimum wage job location, and I just have a feeling that would be there. Or maybe it won't, and I'm completely wrong. Who even knows at this point? The eighth and final character shown is a blue screaming wooden mannequin, and this character is in the Candy Canyon Kingdom. Now, if you've watched a few of my amazing digital circus theories, you would know that it is widely speculated that these wooden mannequin puppets are placeholders for future circus members who find their way into the circus later on. We see proof of this when Pomni and Ragatha walk through the hallway to meet Kofmo after he's been abstracted. If you look closely at the doors when we pass by, you will see many X's over the characters who have been
been abstracted, as well as the portrait of a wooden mannequin. And while at first people may think that the mannequin is part of the cast, if you look at the scene with Bubble and Kane eating at the restaurant, the rest of the Patreons at the establishment are the same wooden mannequins that we see. While we know about those wooden mannequins, there's really not much that we know about the blue ones. There's a chance that potentially this blue mannequin is a haunted ghost? This would make sense with the other couple of ghost characters that we've seen. But why would he be in the Candy Canyon Kingdom instead of the Haunted Mansion? There's just so much we're left in the dark about here. The final leak I wanted to touch on is when episode 2 of The Amazing Digital Circus will finally come out. Fans have been speculating for months when it would drop, and most of us were really far off. My original theory is that it would either come out late February or March of this year, but I was dead wrong. If you look at the community post that Glitch made very shortly after the trailer, you will see that they have already given us the release date. For now, we are looking at episode 2 around May, and this may be disappointing for some, but for me, a rush product is far worse than one that takes time, but ends up being way better in the long run. Because at the end of the day, at least if the episode is good, our time would have been well spent waiting. But a lot of people are complaining about the release date being too far away, which is the worst part. But I think for the most part, people are excited about having episode 2 have time to fully cook and be ready with no major issues. But Glitch has also completely called out Rule 34 and content farm channels, but if you want to see how, watch this video right here.